We feel that the building really has only two options for it. Uh, the first is demolition, which obviously none of us want. And the second though is to try and take it back to what it originally was, which was a huge auditorium designed for three and a half thousand people seated and up to four thousand with stalls standing. Take it back to that original size and if it is converted back to that size then we think uh, commercial operators would be interested. It would be run commercially yeah, in terms of the ownership of the building. We, we hope the council will take ownership and, and continue to own it. Well, I'm from Bradford originally so I always knew about the building, I always quite liked it. Um, my background is textiles actually, not, not property. Uh, but uh, near where, I, where we work up in Great Horton there's an old bingo hall, it used to be a cinema in 1914 and we bought that building uh, because it controlled access to our site and we not really sure what we wanted to do with it, but we converted it into uh, back into its original auditorium uh, condition, restored the proscenium and through that a uh, local cinema historian got in touch with me and started talking to me one day about the Odeon and that's where my interest first uh, sparked off. Even as a cinema it was huge and you can imagine that in, inside the cinemas were built inside the original auditorium, so there's two cinemas side by side and under, underneath the bingo hall so if and when we restore the original auditorium back, it's going to, I think, people take people's breath away, really, the sheer size of it. It's not really a theatre, it's, it's uh, for live events, particularly live music, amplified music. It's not really suitable for non-amplified music. Uh, initially, we looked at maybe a concert hall that could accommodate classical music, but it's not that kind of venue. It's really for live amplified music. Well, it took me a while, really. I mean, I spent a year uh, trying to get information together. Individual members of Borg were very helpful. Uh, although Borg as a group didn't, didn't know me at that time, individual members through Colin Sutton uh, really gave me information about the building and plans and so on. But I spent a year really going, going nowhere. It was only when I found eventually someone, Peter Ange, who's a specialist auditorium consultant, he came along and, and started to advised me and then I started to make progress. Uh, he told me what, what was possible with the building and what was not possible with the building. And he introduced me to Tim Ronalds, the architect, and Tim introduced me to his uh, team of engineers and Nick Russell who came along who specialises in the funding side of it and the business side of it. So it all stemmed from that initial meeting with Peter Ange. It fits pretty well actually because it's a mid -size, considered a mid-sized venue. Um, so it's got about 4,000 people um, stall standing. Leeds Arena has 13,500 um, and the St George's Hall about 1,500. So it, it fits quite nicely in the middle. The nearest venue of this size is about um, is a Manchester Apollo. Mm. So people shouldn't have to go to Manchester to see, uh, see, a, see a venue of this size. Well, it's a bit of a waiting game at the moment because uh, the council have said they want to buy the building. They've informed the HCA they want to buy the building, but on condition that the HCA give them some money to help them do some basic uh, repair works. Uh, the HCA are considering that and uh, should be giving an answer the middle of next month. So if it does go forward, I think it will, and the council end up owning the building, then the council will start um, like a competition invite offers of interest and so on and hopefully we'll be uh, at the forefront of that. This building means a lot to, to Bradford people. It it's, uh, was a centre of Bradford social life for, for 70 years almost. Um, so people have very good memories. That doesn't mean that, um, that I've, I said before at the launch event that these good memories and nostalgia don't pay the bills and a lot of money will be needed to restore this building, convert it into a new use. I, be, I believe it could be done. Uh, I think the council will want to do it. Um, with our help and support hopefully uh, but it, it still needs that public backing uh, because I don't think without that public backing I think the building would have been demolished uh, years ago um, there's been a very grassroots campaign to save it and I think that's I think that needs to continue my background is textiles I'm not in property this is I'm not doing this for any hope of monetary gain or anything like that this Bradford's my hometown um, I want to see it a lively and exciting place like it used to be. So people, people said, some people have said to me that people from Leeds used to come to Bradford for a night out. I couldn't believe that when they told me. That, that's what we want to see again in Bradford. And this kind of venue bringing thousands of people into the city centre 
in an evening is just, just what the city needs really.